from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Hi everybody, welcome back to IBM Think 2021. My name is Dave Vellante, and you're watching theCUBE's continuous coverage of this event. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. We've been doing that virtually for the better part of 14 months now. We're going to get deeper into application modernization. Marie Ashway is here, she's the Director of Marketing at Mainline Information Systems and David Burrows, and Burrows is an account executive at Mainline. Folks, welcome to theCUBE, great to have you on today. Thank you, nice to be here. Marie, I want to start with, with Mainline. A lot of people might not be familiar with, with, with Mainline, but you've transformed over the past five years. I wonder if you could describe that for our audience. Yes, we have, indeed we have. Um, Mainline um, you know, is a 30 plus year company and, um, and for 30 odd years, we had really been focused a lot in hardware, right? Hardware reselling, that's what the market uh, needed. That's what we did a lot of. But then in the past, I would say five to eight years, maybe even 10 years, we started on this transformation project um, for the business where we started transforming ourselves into really systems integrators versus just hardware reseller. So now we can go to a client and we can say, hey, you know, what are you struggling with, right? What are your business challenges? And then from there, we can integrate a solution that might be hardware, it might be software, it might be some services, it could be managed services, it could be staffing services, um, could be a, a number of different things and put all that together and then deliver a complete solution that helps them with their, their business requirements. Well, David, that, that must have been an interesting tr transition because what, what Marie just described is it, in the, it, it used to be every opportunity was a nail and whatever box you were mm -hmm. selling was the hammer. And, and that, that has changed dramatically, of course. So you, you, I wonder what that, the discussion was like with, with, with clients. You must've heard that early on and said, uh-oh, this cloud thing is happening. The world is changing. We've got to change too. I wonder if you could chime in on that transformation. Yes, as our, uh, as our clients have been changing, what we've been doing is uh, you know, making sure that we fully understand what's available, not only in the marketplace, but the com competition, what, what each industry segment, for example, banking versus insurance versus uh, a utility may be facing uh, during this, this time. And so you know, being able to transform as, a, as an account executive, we've been able to uh, indicate and so provide solutions, as Marie indicated, um, the large focus over the last five years has been networking and security. As we move uh, more compute to the edge, close to the edge, security has been predominant. Uh, and so, you know, hardware is really almost commoditized through and through with the exception of, you know, IBM Z and, and power. Uh, and so, you know, we've had to really, as uh, sellers, you know, focus on what customers are dealing with and how they transition. Uh, and as we, uh, you know, through COVID, it's actually been a bigger challenge, a bigger focus on security. And I think we'll talk about that a little bit later in more detail. Well, let's, let's, let's do that now. So, so Marie, maybe at a high level, you could talk about those challenges that your, your clients are facing. And then we can sort of double click on how that was exacerbated by, by COVID. And I'm really interested in your perspectives on sort of the post isolation economy and how those challenges are going to shift. But, but Marie, maybe kick us off at the high level, if you could. Sure, so, um, so, you know, people, companies were moving toward um, uh, the whole digital transformation, right? Probably for the past three to four years, we started seeing more and more that constantly, like, everybody sees those buzzwords all the time. Um, so clients were shifting in that direction and we were shifting to try to satisfy them for, with their needs with those solutions, but then came COVID. And all of a sudden, right, what people were, were planning on doing for the next, let's say, five years. I mean, most CIOs were saying, yeah, we're going to get there in five years. Well, that had to happen, right? It had to have breaks went on and it had to happen um, instantaneously. So that put a big change in focus, a big change in direction for not only our clients, right, but for our own folks, folks like David, who are trying to service these clients with having to bring them these solutions that were going to solve their digital business needs um, today and not five years from now. Yeah, so David, let's, let's talk about that. I mean, 
what Marie just described, I, I call it the force march to digital. Because as, Marie, as you were saying, people were on a digital transformation, but there was a little bit of complacency, you know, okay, hey, we'll get there. We're really busy doing some other stuff. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you've probably seen the meme of the COVID wrecking ball coming, coming into the building, the office building and saying, you know, <laughs> you know well, we're doing fine. No, no. And all of a sudden, boom, the forced COVID comes in. So, 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 so how did that affect y y your clients and how did you respond? I mean, they're asking for VDI, get me some laptops, I need endpoint mm -hmm. security. And so how did that affect the, the application modernization efforts? And, and, and David, maybe you could comment on that. So I, I think for, for me, the biggest uh, challenge was all business, the competition within business to survive COVID, uh, you know, they had to put in, first thing was how do we get our, our customer uh, supported correctly and how do we get our workers supported working at home? So the very first thing we did over the initial six months was most companies had to transform immediately within the first 30 to 90 days to uh, allow their workforce to work from home. Uh, that happened throughout my, my customer base, uh, both in uh, Southern California, uh, was customers really focused on uh, how do we do business process, how do we compete in this marketplace and get return on investment, speak, you know, time to value of what we invest in these uh, COVID times so that we can compete with other uh, businesses that are trying to stay alive uh, through this transition. And, and now that you know, we're seeing on the, on the back end, uh, you know, that time to value in terms of investment is even more important because some businesses have been significantly impacted from not only cash flow, uh, but you know, certainly in terms of profitability during this time. Makes sense. And so now, now Marie, so we were talking earlier about the sort of the, the, the initial path to digital transformation. And I wonder, that's got to be course corrected, I would think. We were forced in to compress you know, the mm -hmm. digital reality. And, and I guess in a way that's good, uh, but in a way it was, we probably made a lot of mistakes. It was a bit of a Petri dish. So now as we begin to knock wood, exit COVID, you would think those, those imperatives adjust and they start to become aligned. What's your take on that? Especially as it re relates to application and infrastructure modernization. Um, so I would agree with that. I think that there definitely has to be a little bit of a, of a realignment happening. And I know recently I read that um, 2021 is expected to be a very um, large year in IT spend because all of those um, initiatives that CIOs and others were going after pre-COVID kind of got put on hold, right? So they could then go focus on all of those digital means that were needed, like, you know, the CDI, you know, work at home, all the security stuff for that. So I, I think we're going to see, I'm thinking we're going to see a shift again now, and maybe um, businesses are going to go back and try to pick up um, where they were uh, prior to COVID and now start working on more of really of the application modernization um, initiatives that were in mind. And I know we wanted to talk about that as well because David's been working on quite a bit of application modernization with um, a few of his clients um, as we're seeing, again, businesses change. Um, and, I, and I don't know that all of that changes because of COVID. I think all of that change was for their competitiveness um, to get there anyway. So I think that's going to start, as you said before, Dave, I think it's going to start now having to kind of rethink up. It reminds me of traffic on the M4, David, if you've ever been to driving in, in London when it's slingshots, right? It's, that's what COVID was like. Marie, you're absolutely right. Last year, IT spend was down four to 5%. This year, I mean, our prediction is, is it's going to be in the six to 7% range, which, which, which kind of aligns with where Gartner and, and IDC are based on our surveys. But you know, back in, in, in April, like I think the 16th of April, it was a headline of Wall Street Journal that, that China grew 18% GDP in the quarter. So it's very hard to predict, but, but it's coming back. You know, we, we can see that David. And so, so spending is really going to accelerate. There's probably some pent up demand for that application modernization. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's been a little bit uh, neglected as we've done, as Marie was saying, the work, and you were saying the work from home. So, Maybe you could talk a little bit more about the, the modernization aspects. And maybe I'm really interested in the things that you guys deliver in your portfolio with IBM. Sure. Uh, so what 
I, I have customers in multiple phases within this uh, current digital transformation. There are customers uh, moving everything to next gen uh, development, which is uh, fully containerized code, uh, being able to you know swiftly go through their development test and and uh, hybrid cloud environments where they're um, they haven't made an investment yet, but they're sampling what it might be like to uh, change into that world. And then there are customers who are still in the uh, typical environment, uh, the traditional uh, environment, and they're looking at what the solutions as far as packages uh, are available for them moving forward so they can kind of skip over uh, any kind of development and be able to uh, leverage uh, what I call next-gen development or next-gen systems uh, immediately. And so, you know, you ask, you know, what are the what are the systems that are available? IBM's Cloud Pack uh, solution set provides a portfolio of, of capabilities, uh, both in the application suite, database suite, security. Uh, I have customers today leveraging that, uh, and and so that is one of the first you know pieces uh, that the customers I see who are on the leading edge or are also kind of trailing are looking at uh, these cloud packs to be able to uh, uh, go time to market and, and time to value uh, quickly. Yeah, so when I look at your portfolio, I just sort of scan the web. Uh, David just mentioned Marie, cloud pack. I mean, we're talking software here. You guys do have a lot of expertise in Z, Z Linux. Power you mentioned is not a commodity. It's one of the few pieces of hardware that and Z, they're not a commodity. Storage, I would think business resiliency fits in there beyond disaster recovery. You know, Red Hat, we're talking, you know, op things like open open shift and Ansible for automation. So these are these are not your grandfather's mainline. These are toolkits or piece, you know, parts of the, the tool bag that you bring to bear to focus on on client outcomes and solutions. Is am I getting that right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and again, right, that goes back to the original opening comment about how we've transformed as a business, right, to become a, an integrator, um, putting all of these different pieces together. I mean, I know that um, something that, that David recently had worked on, oh my goodness, if you would have looked at the list of pieces of elements to that solution, um, it was really quite incredible between um, open source stuff, you know, and a bunch of IBM stuff, um, yes, it was some storage and yeah, there was some power. Um, yes, there was Red Hat, right? But then there was other stuff. There was VMware. Um, there was um, some things that um, I can't even remember now all the names to all the components, but it was, it was a laundry list, right? And so that's where though Mainline stepped in and put the pieces together uh, for the customer so that the customer then can get done what they needed to get done. Which was, which was really solve um, their business problem, which was trying to become more competitive in their market space. Okay, David, so what Maria was just saying was basically my takeaway is, is as a system integrator, you've got all these piece parts with these technologies, you got virtualization, you got automation, you got containers and so forth. Uh, and uh, yes, there's, there's hardware, and, but there's this integration that has to occur. And your job is to abstract that complexity, that underlying complexity away so that the customers can focus on the outcome. Maybe you could talk about that and how you do that. Sure, I'll, I'll give you a good example of a recent customer that, that we work with who was uh, basically running what we consider an enterprise data platform that, that uh, was going to rework their entire data warehouse into something that had governance surrounding it, uh, where they could validate all the data that was coming into their warehouse. And so we underpin that uh, in, with an infrastructure of power. Uh, we're running uh, obviously IBM's uh, cloud pack for data uh, with DB2 warehouse. Uh, we use a combination of, of that with uh, Cloudera data flow through IBM uh, with Kafka streaming and uh, the governance, uh, IBM governance catalog piece, which is uh, lots of knowledge catalog. So uh, we've been able to take not only what their base requirements were, but all the microservices that, that are packaged in with Cloud Pack, uh, all running on OpenShift, uh, which was a great acquisition that IBM did last year. And uh, then uh, they also required other microservices outside uh, to support that environment. 
Paint a picture for us as to what the future looks like. Uh, it's, it's much different than the past 30 years. Uh, and bring us home, please. Sure. So um, I think the future for us is to continue to, um, to find all of the, the solutions um, that will that will help our customers, um, you know, get to their next steps, right? And and there's a lot, as you know, Dave. There's lots of solutions out there. There's lots of new companies that are popping up all the time. Um, you know, inherently, you know, Mainline is an IBM partner. We've been an IBM partner for 30 plus years since our inception, and that's the base of our business is, is IBM. But but there are other requirements. Um, that are needed by, by businesses, by our customers. And that's where we, we reach out and partner up. We probably have, oh my goodness, 200 plus partnerships with various companies, various technology companies that we can then um, lean on and pull in those ancillary solutions um, to, 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 to complete that, that solution for the customer. So I think we're going to continue going down that path, we're going to continue making sure that we're partnered with the, um, the, the leading technology companies so we can build that IBM solution for our customer and, and bolt on the other pieces that are needed. Uh, we're going to continue to grow and enhance our services business because we've got quite a large services business, whether it's implementation services, uh, we do managed services, we have staffing services. I think you're going to see we're still going to continue to, to grow that business because that is a piece where companies, you know, they don't want to worry about running all of that stuff, right? They want to know that their system's going to be running 24 seven. And if there's a bump or a burp or something happens, Hey, they can pick up the phone. They can call mainline. We can help them get things corrected. So I think we're going to still see a lot of that going on as well um, within our, our, our offerings. Excellent. Well, congratulations for making it through that not whole lot. Not, not every uh, uh, hardware seller, reseller made it through and you guys transformed. It's, a, it's an inspiring story. Maria, David, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, you're really welcome. And thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante and our continuous coverage on theCUBE of IBM Think 2021. Keep it right there.